G'day. I was asked by uh, one of the guys at work whether I could help him repair his uh, car the other day. Uh, it's an old uh, MG, uh, sorry, MGB, and the uh, the speedo drive had broken. Now these are a mechanical speedo, and they use a, a worm and worm gear to uh, to drive the needle. Uh, it's uh, for those of you who who just know digital, uh, it's a, it's a completely different system, and. Uh, so I said, yes, I can, I can have a go at that for you, but it's a bit too small to uh, show easily on a, on a video. So instead, what I'm going to do is run through how to make uh, a worm and worm gear in, in greater detail, uh, because that'll, that'll be a bit more helpful to people if they ever have to work to do that sort of thing themselves. These are the parts in question. This is the, uh, the worm wheel. And as you can probably just see there, there's a couple of teeth broken off there. Uh, three, I think. Uh, it's a 20 tooth wheel, it's made out of Bakelite. This is the other bit. This is the, the, the actual speedo drive. And if you're familiar with the old cars, the, the, the drive with a square shaft will come in here. Uh, and then that will turn this uh, worm. In this case, the worm's bigger than the, the gear, the worm gear. Um, that'll, that'll sit in there like so. And as that turns around, that, that scrolls that down. Now, because this is a single start worm uh, and 20 teeth on there, this is a 20, 20 to 1 reduction. If this was a two start, it'd be 10 to 1, of course. The first one I'm going to do is the worm. Um, I've done these before, but I thought I'd explain a little bit of the theory behind them because they're not as straightforward as they look. This all comes about because when you think about the number of teeth on a gear, you've got an integer number and there's a whole bunch of formulas and they can be found in Ivan Law's uh, gear cutting book um, but it comes down to the circular pitch which is the pitch between the teeth and it ends up being um, pi divided by the diametric pitch which means that something that might look like say you know 8 TPI uh, in the case of, the, of the, the practice gear that I'm cutting here is actually something like um, 7.9 and that can that can throw you out now some lathes are um, well fitted fitted out and they've got all sorts of gears in them so you can just dial these up directly mine I've got to use change gears so I've had to put some change gears in that takes what looks like 3 TPI on the gearbox and takes it down to around about uh, well it takes it down to 7.9 something or other I can't remember what the, the digits are it works out to be um, something like uh, 3.14 TPI uh, is, the, um, is, the, is the imperial version of it. Uh, but apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. That pitch is also denote, uh, uh, dictating the helix angle because if you can imagine you've got one full um, rotation of your worm, it has to index that circular pitch. And so that's, that's where your helix angle comes from. And that's going to be some weird number as well. It'll be three point something or other, or five point, you know, it's not going to be a nice round number. You've got to be aware of that. I'm all set up here to uh, cut my worm. Now, you have to think of a worm as basically being a rack in a, in a cylindrical or a helix form. Um, so the, the tool I'm using is a 20, 29, uh, degree tool because that's the um, the pressure angle uh, of sorry that's twice the pressure angle of a, uh, a diametric pitch gear that one is going to look very similar to this uh, this is a rack cutter for a 10 dp gear which is what I'm you know um, 10 dp is what I'm, I'm cutting here and uh, as you can see the, the angles there very similar and so I'll cut my um, Basically, it's going to be a thread with a weird uh, pitch, and uh, we, uh, we'll go from there. There's the finished worm. Um, you know, it's, it's no different from cutting a thread. Uh, the only thing is that uh, because it's a weird pitch, you may have to leave the half nuts engaged. Um, from, from this, um, I've, I've made this so that the, the, the PCD is uh, inch and a quarter. And so from that, uh, with the pitch of the, uh, want a better word, thread, um, plus the, I can work out what the circumference is of the PCD, I can then work out what the helix angle of that is. And that's then what I use to set the, the helix angle on the, on the worm wheel.
one question that you might have is, well, okay, how do you work out the helix angle? Well, it's actually relatively straightforward. It's the pitch of the of the uh, the gear, the worm, uh, the circular pitch, uh, which in this case is point uh, three and four. Uh, multiple uh, and uh, on a on a triangle with uh, the circumference at the PCD, which is pi times the PCD. Uh, this particular gear is is um, has got a pitch circle diameter of uh, one and a quarter inches, so it's three point nine two seven, and then you just put that into a uh, a tan equation, and that comes out at uh, four point six four degrees or four degrees and 38 minutes. Uh, now the minutes are actually important because that's what my scales and things are actually graduated in. So I, I usually have to do that conversion. But it's not, it's not a terribly difficult calculation to do. So yeah, that's, so that's, that's how the, you work out your, what your helix angle is. And then it's a matter of either inclining the table or inclining the head. Uh, and then you're, uh, you're pretty much away then. I'm set up here to cut the worm gear. I've got the head of the mill inclined over at 4 degrees and, well, it should be 38 minutes, but I think I'm up about 40 minutes because that's what the scale reads. That'll be, that should be close enough. Um, and that'll give me my helix angle. I've got the blank turned down to OD, and now I'm going to just plunge the cutter in to DNF and then index around 36 times, and that's purely because that's the size blank I've got. When cutting helical gears, um, because of the the, uh, the helix angle, things aren't quite what they um, what they are with straight spur gears. So things are divided by the uh, the, the the cosine of the angle, uh, in this in this case the, the helix angle. So it's it's 0.96 or something like that. I think for this, uh, it's it's not significant. Uh, if I was cutting a a, a, a um, a worm, so it was a multi-start worm gear, or uh, sorry, multi-start worm for a worm, gear, and I was cutting the worm gear, or I was cutting a, a skew gear. Um, I would have to take that helix angle into account when working out what cutter to use, what diameter to make the OD, and all that sort of thing. But uh, as it is, I'm I'm good. This is the finished product. Uh, you can just pick up the, the helix angle on there. And when I get my worm in there, uh, it nests quite nicely and it's, it's pretty much straight. So that's, that's all good. Uh, that means that the helix angle is about right. Because this has got 36 teeth and this has got one start, it's gonna be a 36 to one uh, gear, production gear. Uh, what else is there worth knowing about? Well. As you can see, that's that's basically the form of a rack. Uh, this is this is um, the, the the tooth has got the the form of the cutter, uh, which is about what's that seventy millimeters in diameter, as opposed to uh, the worm. So you can see that there's there's con there's reasonable contact there, but as you as you get further out, it's it's uh, it it goes. Um, and that's the problem with this, but then again, we're not making worms to transmit um, lots of power. We're making worms mainly for reduction purposes. So that's not a, that's not a big drama. Um, with commercial gears too, what you'll find is that I've, I've just got a little bit of relief here on the, on the corners, but what you'll find with those is they've got quite a lot, uh, almost you know, from, the, from the base of the tooth to there. So, you know, 60 degree relief, because when you think about it, that corner of the tooth is really not doing terribly much. So anyway, that's, um, that's the equations and the, and, and the, the, the calculations for uh, working out a, a worm and a, a worm wheel. Uh, not terribly difficult, difficult once you know the, the trick to it. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching. Uh, please spread the word and uh, we'll see you for the next one.